Hi everyone, my name is Chelsea. Welcome to Little Mountain Ranch. I'm really happy to have you here with us today. I have so much to catch you up on. It is bright and early in the morning. It is 6.30 a.m. and I am coming outside to do a little bit of gardening because it is too blazing hot during the day right now to be able to be out in the garden. What a beautiful morning though, isn't it? It was 30 degrees in the shade yesterday at 3 p.m., <laughs> which is really, really hot for us. I have been doing my gardening in the evening once the sun goes behind the mountain and in the early mornings when it's still cool enough to wear a sweater. One of the benefits of where we live is it can get really, really hot during the day, but it always cools off at night, which makes sleeping really nice. The garden is starting to look like something. All of these beds here have fresh compost on them. So we have this one up here and then all the beds up in the upper part of the garden to do still. Lots of growing mess here in front of the greenhouse. I did get the sprout box garden bed all planted and I filled it full of herbs. Let me show you a little more closely. So we have chamomile in here, cute little garden gnome that my boys got me for Mother's Day. And one of my sons made me this little garden gnome. He carved it for me. I have straw flowers along the back, parsley, sage, another cute little garden ornament from my daughter, lavender, rosemary, lemon balm, thyme, and oregano. And then over in this one, I have snapdragons, straw flowers, and giant marigolds. Look at how sad and tiny. Oh, good morning, Maple. How are you? Out in the cool weather too. Look at how tiny my petunias are. They are just so sad. I never did pot these up into better soil. So they're gonna be much happier now that they're in some good soil. And these beautiful geraniums, I got six of these. One of my sons brought me to a nursery that I'd never been to before yesterday for Mother's Day. And I got six of these because they were just so healthy and gorgeous looking. Okay, so for planting so far, in this row, I have Shasta daisies along the back, snapdragons, and then celery all in here. Down over there, I have some lettuces, some bok choy, and then um, what do I have at the end here? Celery act down there. And then in between this row, because these grow fairly slowly, I planted some breakfast radishes. These are the only kind of radishes that we really like. And I particularly like these when they're roasted. So I planted those down the middle because these grow super fast and they will be pulled out of the ground before these get nice and big. These seedlings are just looking so sad that I decided they were better off to go in the garden. I'll just keep them really well watered rather than leave them in their cells. I'm not sure what else I am going to actually get into the ground today. There's a couple of these trays that look like they could stick it out in the trays a little bit longer, like these cauliflower here, but these cabbages are just looking awful. Like look at the sad color of these leaves. Probably should have gotten some liquid fertilizer for these guys. I'm gonna wait to put these onions in the ground because they have such tiny little root systems and the chance of them frying out in this heat is pretty high. So I'm going to leave those until I just realized this heat wave is not supposed to be over until Friday, which is five days from now. And these onions are probably going to suffer for being in these cells. I might need to get some liquid fertilizer and fertilize them. They'll be okay in there if they can get a little bit of extra food. This is such an odd problem to have in my area <laughs> this time of year, honestly. Some pretty baskets here that Dan got me for Mother's Day. I'm gonna get one more for the bottom down here. I actually left my cucumbers and my squash out overnight the last couple of nights because it's been so warm. I've decided just to have them grow out outside so I don't have to worry about hardening off. And then I have a whole bunch of these giant marigolds to put all over the garden. Some of the garden huckleberries to get planted out, just getting these hardened off. Their leaves are pretty fragile, so they'll burn if I put them out in the sun. Not much left in the greenhouse. 
the plan with the extra tomato plants and the extra peppers that didn't fit into my high tunnel is actually to dig out these beds underneath here. We're gonna fill these full of peppers and then we'll put the tomato plants uh, because they're gonna grow tall in some pots in here. Okay, let me show you the next thing that we have that we've been up to. We have started to install the drip irrigation. So I'll show you the kind of system that we're using here. It's not all hooked up yet. I'll show you why. Okay, so we're using this stuff. This is drip irrigation tape, it's called. It's just really thin. It's perforated all the way along for the water to drip through. And then these hoses over here connect up to the ends of it using these little plugs. So this plugs right into there and then this end plugs into the tape. They sent us the wrong size um, connectors for hooking up all the water. So Dan's actually going down to pick up some of the right sized ones this morning and then we'll be able to get this all hooked up which which is fantastic because I have been having to water every single day just because it's been so hot. I actually need to get the hose out and give everything a good soak down again this morning. I'm hoping that we're gonna have time today to get this all set up. I did get all of the lines put everywhere here and there's just these plugs that go on the end of each of the lines. So the water will be connected over here we were originally gonna do it over here, but because of the big long connecting line that has to go across the back, this area here is the main kind of traffic coming in and out of the high tunnel. And I don't want all that getting stepped on. So we're gonna run the water in through the back of the high tunnel over here. And then all the water runs down these lines and they just get shut off on the, or um, blocked off on the end with these little blocks or plugs, I guess and then they will water my high tunnel. I'm so happy about that. Look at how much happier my little pepper plants are looking compared to when we put them in the ground a few days ago. This is so exciting to me <laughs> that they look so much better already. And my little tomato plants are also looking beautiful. Can you see the little tiny drops of water on the tips of these leaves? So what that is, is when the plant has more water than it needs during the night, but there's not the warm temperatures to evaporate it off its leaves, the water will come out of its leaves and then just sit in those little droplets until it warms up in here, and then it will evaporate off. It's just a way of the plant to get rid of excess water that it doesn't need, because that actually is happening all the time with a plant, but when the um, air temperature is cool, we get to actually see it in the form of those little tiny droplets. I had to take off all of the mulch off of these beds so that I could run these lines nice and close to the soil. And then also I want to be able to see if there's any areas that are blocked once we get this all hooked up. And then I may put the mulch back up on the beds again, we'll see. Okay, let's go figure out what we're gonna do for planting this morning. Okay, I think I am going to put these cabbages that look really sad over here into the garden. Which bed should I put them in is the question. I think we'll put them right beside here. I am considering using netting over my brassicas this year. Last year we had a huge issue with cabbage moths. I've always had a few cabbage moths flitting around my garden, but each year since I started gardening here, they've been increasing with each passing year, probably because they found a lovely habitat in my garden. And um, so we'll see how they are this year, but I want to use these nice straight rows so that I can easily cover them with the netting. So we'll put the other cabbages right beside here. The garlic's starting to look fantastic. The onions have perked up a little bit. I was really worried that these onions would die in this heat. You can hardly see them because they're so small but they do have some new leaves starting to come up here right there so that means that the roots are getting established and they're actually growing which is a huge relief the leeks they're just a sturdier plant than the onions and they handle transplanting out in this heat no problem super super tiny but it's nice and green and healthy looking the garlic is looking 
so great. That's that garlic that we transplanted a week ago now. Totally got settled in and is growing really well. So that makes me super happy. Okay, let's get into planting these little brassicas, sad looking little brassicas. These ones are Copenhagen market cabbage. And then these ones on this side are giant or mammoth red acre cabbage. We have about six inches or so of fresh compost on the top of all of these beds. So this is just composted manure from 12 months ago. Ooh, darn it, the mosquitoes have found me. So there's one advantage of being out in the morning and that is that it's nice and cool. The disadvantage is that the mosquitoes like the cool weather as well. Last night they were just fierce out here. It was awful. When it comes to brassicas, they are really heavy feeders. So the more delicious, wonderful compost that you can give them, the better. And even if your soil is not super great, it's not a bad idea to give them a feeding halfway through the summer as well. Look at this. We have a munched on leaf there. Oh, those cabbage moths are terrible. Um, I will probably have to put some some type of netting on these this year. When it comes to spacing with your plants, all you need to do is picture the size the plant is going to be when it's fully grown and then plant accordingly and make sure that there's lots of space. When it comes to brassicas, I find because I'm planting them in such rich compost that I don't need to um, give them enough space so they're not touching when they're fully grown, that they can be touching a little bit but I still want them to have enough space. Oh no, maple, no, 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 no. <laughs> so just in the process right now of painting my gate for my garden. And this girl right here really loves joining me in the garden, but she loves me a whole bunch. And so she wants to get right in as close to me as she can and um, tends to go right in the bed that I'm planting. Oh, she's gonna hang out right there, okay as long as she's not sleeping on my plants. All right, back to what I was saying. I can't remember if I finished the sentence about spacing. So basically just make sure that your plant has enough space that it can grow to its full size. It can touch the plant that's beside it. You can see these cabbages are fairly close together, um, but it's more the roots that I want to have far enough apart that the plant can get whatever nutrients it needs without having a ton of competition. So these, oh man, these are, these are the saddest looking seedlings I have ever had. Oh my gosh. Oh, poor little guys. They're going to feel hopefully better now getting into some fresh soil. Okay. I'm going to show you this really sad seedling here. You see how floppy it is and how thin this part is so you can actually with brassicas you can bury them down the stem a little bit you don't want to bury them down too much they're not going to develop roots out of these stems but it will make your plant a little bit sturdier and sit more upright just to bury it down just a little bit and i've had no issues with doing that over the years the nice thing about planting your brassicas so that they are fairly close together is that as the plant grows and the leaves shade out the soil, it tends to suppress the growth of weeds, which is kind of nice. Ooh, those mosquitoes, can you guys see them flying around me? They're not really biting me right now, but they're definitely flying around. So these are soil blocks. You can see the roots coming out of the bottom there. These are pretty hardy, so all of the roots have kind of grown together in these soil blocks, but you can just pull them apart and not cause much damage to the plants themselves. So I have 50 cabbages in the ground right now, which I feel like is a good number, and I'm going to plant these sad little cauliflowers down at the bottom part. My plan on this side so this bed that runs all the way from where we stand here all the way up to the top of the garden i'm actually going to use weed barrier along on this entire bed 
all the way up to the edge of this bed here. And the reason that I'm going to do that is because the quack grass has been coming in on the side and these beds were absolutely infested with it. And I'm sure there's tons of roots from when we tilled in underneath here. So I'm just gonna cover that and try to make a bit of a barrier between the quack grass on the side here and the rest of the garden over this way. So gorgeous this time of day, oh my word. You can see how hazy the air is. We do have a lot of smoke blowing in from the Alberta fires. Many of you had commented asking if we were anywhere near the fires. We're not, we're in BC and the fires are in Alberta. And as far as I understand right now, they have the majority of those fires under control, but they do expect that with this heat wave that they're also getting, that the fires might kick up again. I have to admit to being a little bit nervous about uh, this heat wave this time of year because we have been getting consistently more and more intense heat waves over the last few summers, but we have never had a heat wave in all the years that I've lived here, um, especially not one that's so sustained at the, we're not even in the middle of May yet. So it's a little bit concerning from a um, fire perspective. That's for sure. Such a pretty little girl. Come on. <laughs> you gonna just hang out with me? Or are you watching her? Don't worry, don't worry. She's a nice dog. She wouldn't hurt you. See, she's just hanging out. Over in my membership community this month, we're talking about all things gardening and I have lots of information about growing brassicas, seed planting guides for May. And I actually have a seed planting guide available in my shop as well. And I think it's like four bucks or something like that. So if you're interested in checking that out, I'll put a link down in the show notes for you. Definitely want to plant every single cauliflower I can. I love cauliflower and I can't wait to try freeze drying it and I like using it in my pickle mixes as well. So tasty. We also make crepes with broccoli and cauliflower, like a savory crepe with a cheese sauce, which my kids love. So we're gonna get this row all planted and then I'm gonna give it a really good soak. And then I think we're gonna go inside and decide what we're going to make for dinner tonight and get that going because I'd like to do, as you know, I like to do most of my cooking in the morning anyway, but especially in the summer when it's hot like this because we don't wanna heat the house up. Okay, so I'm gonna get all of these planted and then it's going to be time to milk the cows. So we'll bring you down for milking and I'll give you an update on all the animals and you'll be able to see Patty. He's doing awesome. He goes in the barn at night because we do once a day milking here which means we separate him from his mama at night, milk in the morning, and then he goes out on the pasture with his mom during the daytime. That works really well for us. We get enough milk for our needs and the calf gets to be raised by his mom, which is awesome. They do way better that way. All right, we have all of our milking gear ready and I can hear milkweed hollering away down there. So she's ready too. These are all the things that I bring down for milking. So obviously the canister for the milk to come in, the milking claw, this is hot water. This is the water that I use for rinsing. This is hot soapy water with vinegar in it that I use for washing this out. I'll show you how I do that when we get down there. And then I have three gallons to put the milk into because the milk goes into here and then I dump it from here into these so that I can use this hot soapy vinegar water to rinse the claw out with the pump so it flushes all of this out. And then this is my rinse water. And I just keep the claws in the rinse water along with the end of the part that hooks up to the machine just so that everything stays clean on its way down to the barn. And then of course, I use my everything wagon. This wagon I got from Princess Auto 
three years ago now, I think, and it is fantastic. I actually need to get a second one because I use this now for all my milking supplies. But once we're into harvesting, I use it for all my harvesting. It works great for putting like beets and stuff in because, oh, let's see if I can stop here because I can just put them right in and then use the hose to wash them off right in the cart. It's super handy. We'll stop by the rabbit tractor on the way down and I'll show you the baby bunnies. Just looking so cute. I was in the house for maybe 20 minutes since being out in the garden and I cannot believe how hot it is already. Oh my word. I know I talk about the weather a lot, but that is because the weather determines everything on a farm. Determines when you can plant, when you can harvest, how much water you need to put on, when you can hay, how much water the animals need. It's, it is the determining factor for just about everything that we do here. Oh, there's the rabbit tractor. Hi, mama. Oh my goodness, look at that, little sweetheart. This one's eyes aren't just opening, not quite there yet. This one has a little white spot on its head and on its nose and its eyes are open. This one's a little blonde one and one eye is open, a little black one. And, oh, it's okay, buddy. This one has one eye open too. So cute. Can you hear milkweed over there? She is very much ready to be milked. Hi, Patty, how are you? Look at how gorgeous and big this little bull calf is. Well, he's a steer calf now, aren't you, bud? Hey. Good boy, he's such a good boy. These are all of our chickens. As you can see, they're getting nice and big. I'm just gonna pull all this stuff out and put some fresh sawdust in here. Excuse me, guys. Come on, let you go. Toot, toot. If this weather keeps up, we'll actually be able to move them outside earlier than usual, which would be awesome. They're so much happier when they're out on pasture. Nala, you are not gonna be able to stay there, little lady. Afraid not. Oh, is mommy coming? Come on, come on. Good girl. Come on, a little bit more. Ah, that's a good girl. Making sure that all of our animals have adequate shade and water when it's hot like this is super important. This is particularly important for pigs because pigs don't sweat the same way that we do. They actually need some external source to cool off. So that's one of the reasons why pigs love a wallow is because it helps to keep them cool. So we need to make sure the pigs have a wallow. Rabbits also don't do well when it is super hot. So making sure that they have adequate shade. 
and water as well. Okay, so we are now done. The milk's all strained in the fridge. We are now going to make some pasta salad for lunch because this is something that is not going to heat up my kitchen too much. So I just have my pot of water getting ready to add my pasta into and I'm just using elbow macaroni for this pasta salad. And for all of the additions to it, we're gonna throw in some red onion, some broccoli, whole bunch of peppers, feta cheese. What we're gonna do is get all of these red onions chopped finely. I was thinking of making some bread this morning, but I think I'm gonna wait and do that a little bit later. And Dan just got home and he has all the things to do the um, water system down in the high tunnel, but we decided that we're gonna wait and do that a little bit later. So that will come in the next video and we'll show you that all put together. And we're gonna, going to also have some tools running in the background as usual because Dan, <laughs> is going to be doing renovations behind us. So do it somewhere else if you want. No, it's all right. That's sure. fine. I'm fine with it. Be noisy. That's all right. This part shouldn't take too terribly long anyway. Well. Sorry, I didn't warn you. <laughs> okay. I won't. So I want to make sure that these are pretty finely chopped, these onions. So there's not any big, huge chunks in there. Do you know what I feel like I should do, hun? Is come up with a summer menu. Hard boiled a whole bunch of eggs too earlier and they're just sitting in the sink in some cold water to peel up. And we'll have those on the side. Plus I like to keep a bowl of hard boiled eggs in the fridge so people can just grab them, especially when we're flush with eggs like we currently are. I forgot to include all of the tomatoes. Look at how beautiful that looks. So now we'll add our fed cheese. Can't wait till I can make a salad like this with everything off the farm once all the fresh veggies start coming in. So for our dressing, we're going to use olive oil, vinegar, salt and pepper, a little bit of oregano, and some white wine vinegar. Okay, we're gonna dump our pasta in here. And I just rinse this off with cold water. And then I'm going to mix in all of our veggies in here. Yeah, one sec. And then our dressing. Okay, now once I have that all that mixed in, I'm gonna add a whole bunch of mayo. A little bit more oregano. This is absolutely delicious. So good. So now I will put that into the fridge until lunchtime and that is going to be enough for a couple of meals which is fabulous especially during the summer when it's really busy I love to be able to do that it is time for me to tidy up this mess and then head outside with Dan to get the irrigation system all set up for the high tunnel and I'll make sure that I show that to you in the next video I hope you enjoyed this one and I look forward to seeing you next time bye